Hey headphone people, welcome back to the channel. Um, got a review for you today. This one's been, I've been seeing a ton of these reviews lately, the NTH 100 by Rode. Um, you know, I'm guessing what happened to a lot of people is Z put out a positive review of these. They're pretty cheap, so the rest of us are kind of like scrambling to uh, ride that coattail. It's not proud of it, but uh, here we are. So. <laughs> Anyway, we're gonna talk about the NTH 100. Um, we're gonna see how it stacks up. You know, is all this hype? Is it justified? Uh, or is it just kind of another closed back that's gonna fade into the mix? So let's let's dig into it. Let's see what you get. And, and we'll talk sound as well and in, in value, all right? So the box, uh, it's, it's pretty nice packaging actually, I would say. It, um, you know, it's not super fancy or anything, but it does kind of like open up and they sat in there really nice, obviously, uh, when they came. It's nothing to write home about, but it, it, it was nice packaging, right? It was a good unboxing experience. Okay, so what do you get with it? Well, you get a little carry bag, okay? You get um, a quarter inch adapter that screws on and you get these little rings, which I assume is for um, like if you have a studio and you have like multiple sets of these, I would guess is what those are. I'm not 100% sure on that, but that's my guess. All right. Um, it, there's also a little plug in there uh, because you can actually put the cable in either side of these, which is cool. Um, so that's kind of a neat little aspect of it. I'm gonna set that stuff aside for the time being. And then you've got the cable. It's a very rubbery cable. Um, you can see it's got chunky, kind of chunky ends to it. My cat actually uh, kind of chewed on mine a little bit there, the bastard. But um, anyway, <laughs> both ends are pretty chunky. Um, it is proprietary, so it does, it's at 3.5, but it does have kind of like a screwing lock-in mechanism um, when you stick it in the cup. And like I said, it can go in either side of the cup, which is cool. Uh, I don't particularly like the cable. It's perhaps a little long. It's maybe about eight feet. So as far as like sitting at your desk listening, it's like a little bit too long for me, I would say. Um, but it's, it's an okay cable. It just feels really like rubbery, surgical, tubey, okay? Now let's look at the build of the, these headphones because you know they they are pretty well built and it's a little bit more of a unique design, right? Um, so you're gonna first thing you'll probably notice is the shape of the cups. Uh, they're attached in the back. They kind of they swivel back and forth. There's a good amount of of movement and articulation there. They swivel up here too, kind of at this joint. Um, the pads are nice. They tout them as having like a cool foam or something like that in them. Um, I don't know. They feel good to me. I, I don't have any problem with them. A little bit of cushion here on the top. Not a ton. Um, I did find out of the box that they clamped pretty hard, but after a couple of weeks of use here, they uh, are doing just fine uh, for me. So I can wear them for quite a while, pretty comfortable. The one thing I would say about them is I wish they were about like just 25% bigger. You know, I wish kind of everything was about 25% bigger. Now, I don't have a big head if you've been following the channel, so I don't need more room in that regard, but I think that might have eased the clamp a little bit out of the box. And the pads, although they're nice and they're plenty deep, they're just a little bit tight. Like they pretty much touch like all my ear and I don't have particularly large ears. So I think for a lot of people, these are gonna almost be more like on ears instead of over ears, which is a bummer because I think they're pretty comfortable otherwise. I just wish, I just wish that cup wasn't so cramped, honestly. Um, what else to talk about here? Uh, so metal headband, and then this is kind of unique, right? They have like a locking mechanism so you can slide this and then you twist it to lock it. Um, I didn't have any problem with this. I kind of think that's actually a cool idea really. And I mean, especially it seems like they're catering this towards professionals, you know, studio use for monitoring and things like that. So if you want to have your stuff like set and ready to go so you can pop them on and off and you don't even have to think about it, right? You can put your wire on whatever side you prefer and you can just kind of get them all set up. You got your little color band on them so you know which ones are yours. So I feel like a lot of the decisions they've made with this have that kind of use in mind and uh, that's pretty cool. Like I think that's pretty cool. You can even see there's like, I don't know if this is like Grail or something like that or, or what, but there's like, different dots 
on each side so i don't know if that in like grail is like right and left or it's not grail it's braille uh right i guess i can guess that right um i'm gonna check that uh, honestly Okay, it is Braille, just so you know, and it's spelled B-R-A-I-L-L-E, if you didn't know that. But pretty cool is this is actually, so these three dots is Braille for L, and the uh, three dots with the little other center one there, that's Braille for R. So not only do they have them marked with red and black, they have them marked for people that can't see you, which is pretty freaking cool and thoughtful of them, right? Um, never seen that on a headphone before. So I think that pretty much rounds out build. Um, all in all, I'd say great build for around a hundred bucks or I can't remember what I paid for them, hundred, hundred and fifty dollars. Um, so really solid build as far as I now time will tell you know if they stand up over a long period of time but um, within my limited time you know two or three weeks using them it seems fine so let's talk sound right this is and this is where it comes I don't know this review probably seems pretty positive up to this point um, which it should I, I think you know packaging comfort build they're all pretty decent okay sound is also pretty decent but i mean it's nothing like it doesn't get me excited or anything like that like i don't really think sound wise these headphones are doing anything special they don't do anything tremendously wrong either um they're just as far as sound goes i would say they're like a run-of-the-mill close back under 150 dollars which means and, and and geared towards monitoring so i'd say right that's the appropriate price for the amount of detail and technical ability you're getting here which is to say you know it's adequate but it's nothing special um it's not crazy extended on both ends or anything like that but i i think the frequency response is tuned pretty flat which is good i think for monitoring um at least i imagine that not that that's the kind of work that i do or the kind of listening i do but for me it seems like it's probably adequate for that um the timbre is pretty good as far as just sounding natural and normal it doesn't sound weird or anything like that um so, so it just it's it's fine right it's it's fine the sound is fine um if you want that kind of flat response maybe not it's not like an emotional or really engaging presentation but you know if this is meant just to be like I can wear this all day and I can monitor audio and I can do my work. I think these will work well for that. So I wanted to bring in a comparison headphone here just to give you like a contrast, right? Um, a little bit. So these are the Focal Allegias. This is a, well, they're new. They're like maybe 800, but now you can get them for pretty much 400. Um, but you can buy them on the used market for even 300 or less than 300, right? So, and, and I have mine uh, with sheepskin, solid Dakoni sheepskin pads on them, okay? Switching to these, switching to the Allegias here, like pretty much across the board, they're just better in, in every regard. Um, you know, they're, I mean, comfort and stuff, they're fine. They're, I would say they're pretty equivalent comfort-wise and stuff like that. And even build-wise, I feel like they're pretty equivalent, honestly. Um, Focals, you know, they're nice, but they're not anything super special build-wise, build, build -wise, I don't feel. Um, but when it comes to the sound, the Allegia is just, it's far more dynamic. And I think really when it comes to dynamics, like that's probably really the main knock against the sound of the Rhodes is it just doesn't sound very dynamic. It's just a flat sounding headphone, right? The Allegia, it can have kind of a weird frequency response with the stock pads. With the sheepskins, I think it brings them much more kind of in line with a more typical frequency response. It's still, it's a pretty neutral frequency response, but just the amount of detail and texture and dynamics and the resolution and the spatial information, right, are just all so much better on the Allegia than they are on the road. Um, it's really, really noticeable um, how much better the Allegia is just in, in overall ability in producing sound than the road is. That being said, I mean, the Allegia, it can have a little bit of a funky frequency response and it'll get its own video here before too long. 
um, to the point where sometimes I don't want to listen to the Elegia. I feel like, you know, the Rhodes, this is just, it's just a super safe sound for like monitoring. Again, it's not going to stand out as harsh or, or anything like that. Like it's just going to be easy to wear for long periods of time and listen to for long periods of time. The trade-off you're making there is it's not the most exciting, engaging, or technical listen, right? But for the price, that's okay. Um, so is this some magical end-all be-all, you know, closed back headphone for under $150? I don't think so, um, but it, it's a good option if you're looking for something that has a flat response that's fairly comfortable. If you don't have small ears, that you can wear all day long. This is going to fit that bill pretty well, I think. Okay, it's going to fit that bill pretty well. Um, you know, other options that you would look at would be something like the, the Sivga 021, right? That's going to be like a much more V shaped, like fun headphone. Um, in this price range, okay? Something like the Bayer Dynamic DT770, still kind of a studio use headphone. Um, that's gonna be a more exciting, more engaging, better spatial information, right? But it's also gonna be maybe a little bit harder to listen to all the time, or some things will come off as harsh or sharp or maybe a bit similar with that headphone. So again, it's just, it's fine. It's a fine headphone for the money. It's not gonna blow your socks off, I don't think. At least it didn't blow mine off. And I think that's gonna do it. So, questions, comments, alternative opinions, drop them down below as usual. I always appreciate you watching. If you made it this far, thank you to you for that. You know, if you want more headphone content and specifically if you're interested in closed backs in the three to five, maybe a little bit more dollar range, um, stick around. I'm going to have several of those coming before too long. So thank you and I hope to see you in the next video.